Hi guys, welcome to this 15th tutorial in this series of programming PIC microcontroller with MPLAB XC8 compiler. In this tutorial, we're gonna learn about interrupt. Interrupt are one of the most powerful features of PIC microcontrollers. Interrupt make it possible to create application that can respond to external stimulus in real time. An interrupt is basically an event that requires the microcontroller to stop whatever it's doing and then jump to execute a program code related to that event that caused the interrupt. An interrupt requires immediate attention. Only once the microcontroller will finish executing the interrupt code, then it can go back to continue with the main program. The interrupt code is called the interrupt service routine or interrupt handler. Guys, here is a simple example to understand interrupt. Let's say you are playing a game with your phone and suddenly somebody is calling you. Your phone starts ringing. Your phone will immediately leave the game and start ringing. Only once you are done with the call, then the phone will jump back to the game. This process is similar to the interrupt service routine execution. You can think the main program routine in this case as playing the game and ringing of the mobile phone as causing an interrupt. This initiates your mobile phone conversation which is similar to executing the interrupt service routine. Guys, if there were no interrupt while playing the game, the microcontroller will time to time pause the game and monitor if someone is trying to call you. As you can see, this is not an efficient way of programming as it consumes all its processing time for monitoring and there can be a possibility of missing a short process that can require immediate attention. The best way is to leave the microcontroller do its normal main program and if there is nothing to do, let the microcontroller go into sleep mode and be awakened only to respond to an interrupt that occurs. This can save power, especially if the application is battery powered. The process of continuous monitoring is known as polling. Interrupts can be very useful in many applications, such as in fail-safe applications. For example, in an emergency such as a power failure, in a hazardous environment where a microcontroller has to take some precise coordinated actions like switching off the system immediately in an orderly manner in such applications, an external interrupt can force the microcontroller to stop whatever it's doing and take immediate attention. Interrupt can be also very useful in performing routine tasks. If an application requires the microcontroller to perform routine tasks at precise times, such as blinking a status LED, reading input of sensors connected to the microcontroller exactly every few milliseconds, a timer interrupt scheduled with the required timing can divert the microcontroller from normal program execution to accomplish the task at the precise time required. Interrupt can also be used to check if certain tasks have been completed. Some applications may need to know when a task such as an analog to digital conversion is completed instead of polling for incoming data from a USART or USB port for example, an interrupt could be raised immediately when the analog to digital conversion is done or when there is an incoming data instead of keeping the microcontroller doing nothing but waiting for this to happen. Different peak microcontrollers have different interrupts, but most have both the core and peripheral interrupt sources. Always check your device data sheet to find out more about the interrupt. Most of peak 18F series peak microcontrollers have the following interrupt. The external interrupt, which is the external edge triggered interrupt, on pin RB0, RB1, and RB2. This interrupt is normally called int0, int1, and int2. We've got interrupt on port B pin changes. If any one of pin RB4 to RB7 pins changes status, this can raise an interrupt. Timer 0 overflow interrupt. 
Tema 1 overflow interrupt. Tema 2, Tema 3 overflow interrupt. Parallel slave port read write interrupt. ADC convention completed interrupt. The USART received interrupt. USART transmit interrupt. Synchronous serial port interrupt. CCP1 interrupt. CCP2 interrupt. Comparator interrupt. EEPROM flash write interrupt. Bus collision interrupt. And low voltage detect interrupt. In peak 18 f 45 they have 10 registers that control the interrupt operation. The Rcon, the Intcon, Intcon 2, Intcon 3, PR1, PR2, PIE1, PIE2, IPR1, and IPR2. We're not going to go into the theory of all these registers. We're going to try to make this tutorial as simple as possible so that you can be able to use the basics of the interrupt. For more information, you can go to the data sheet of the peak that you're going to be using to learn more about all these registers. Every interrupt source, except the int O, has three bits to control its operation, a flag bit to indicate whether an interrupt has occurred, regardless of whether it is enabled or not. This bit has a name ending in IF. The second bit is an enable bit which is used to enable or disable the interrupt source. This bit has a name ending in IE. And lastly, a priority bit to select high or low priority. This bit has a name ending in IP. For an interrupt to occur, the following condition must be satisfied. The interrupt enable bit of the interrupt source must be enabled. For example, if the interrupt source is a hardware external interrupt on pin RB0, the pin int O, then bit int O IE of the register int con must be set to 1. Then the interrupt flag of the interrupt source must be cleared. For example, if the interrupt source of the external interrupt pin is int O, then int O IF should be cleared to 0. If the interrupt source is a peripheral interrupt, then peripheral interrupt enable disable bit PEIE of intcon must be set to 1. And lastly, the global interrupt enable disable bit GIE of intcon must be set to 1. Guys, let us see how we can use this interrupt. Let us do a simple example and you're going to see how easy it is to use this interrupt. We're going to start by the external interrupt on port B. These are int O, int 1, and int 2. We're going to write a simple program to read the status of my switch. This switch could represent anything. It could be a limit switch. It could be a sensor. It could be anything really. This simple program is going to blink D1 at an interval of one second on and off. But when it detects an interrupt, if switch 1 is pressed, then it's going to jump to the interrupt service routine. In this case, it's going to start blinking 5 times very fast. After finishing, then it's going to go back and continue with its normal operation, which in this case is to switch on and off D1 at an interval of 1 second. The first thing we, we set our configuration bit, we're going to use an ex external crystal oscillator, 8 MHz. We're going to use an external reset circuit connected to MCLR pin and basically the rest of the stuff you should know by now the MCLR pin is on then in our main program we set the, the first four pin of port B as input and the last four is output so basically pin RB0 to pin RB3 as input and RB4 to RB7 as output then in our interrupt processes the first step we enable the interrupt on RB0, which is int O IE. If you wanted to use RB1, then it could have been int 1, and int 1 is in, in int con 3 register. And lastly, if you wanted to use RB2, RB2 is going to be int 2 IE, and int 2 is in int con 3 register. In this case, we're going to use the first pin which is RB0 
which is gonna be int zero in int con register. The second step, we're gonna set our interrupt at the following edge. So this is gonna be int int con two. If you're gonna forget about this int con registers, you could just say int oie and the compiler is gonna select automatically the register. Then you can say the falling edge is gonna be zero, which is gonna be falling edge. And here we're gonna clear our interrupt with the bit if. This is basically to enable the global interrupt. And let's go to the, our interrupt routine with xc8 to declare an interrupt to use the keyword interrupt. This is gonna be our interrupt service routine. The first thing we're gonna do is to check if the interrupt flag is to check the receive flag. This is gonna be one if the interrupt has occurred. Then if an interrupt has occurred, then this is the code that we're gonna be doing. In this case, we're gonna flash the LED connected to port B5 on at an interval of 300 milliseconds on and off. We're gonna flash it five times. This is a four loop. We're gonna flash it five times. And after we finish flashing, we're gonna clear our interrupt. We're gonna clear it to zero. Then after it, we finish the interrupt service routine code, then our program is gonna jump back to the main program and continue what it's doing, which in, in this case is gonna be to flash on and off an LED connected to B4 at an interval of one second. Let us run our project and see how it's gonna simulate. Run. Gonna run my simulation. You can see the LED one is flashing on and off at an interval of one second. If I press the switch, you're gonna notice that it's gonna stop basically what it was doing, whether it was on, it's gonna remain on until it finished the interrupt service routine. And whether it was off, it's gonna remain off until it finish because this is a priority, it's gonna finish, it's gonna leave whatever it was doing and jump to the interrupt service routine code, do it, finish it, then go back to the main program. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're gonna continue with our interrupt. In the next tutorial, we're gonna learn the peripheral interrupt, how they can be implemented using X8 compiler. Thank you guys, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to receive more tutorials in the future. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.